Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the prep video for lesson 14. This will be the last prep video until video 17, mostly because we will be touching on elements that we've already discussed previously, either in the last section or in this section, and have talked about numerous times. So it's more just to sort of practice what we've already done in the following videos. But in this video, we will be doing something slightly new that we've only discussed previously, and we'll be implementing this throughout the rest of the section. So this video has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors, and with that said, let's make a start with the prep video proper. So in this tutorial, we'll create our widget. This will be our inventory slot, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. We will use this component within our inventory UI, which we'll make in the next video. And then we'll come back to that in about two videos time, because in the two videos after that, we're actually going to have our items be added to that slot and see our inventory system is fully working. I am recording this after doing those videos, so I can tell you it is working and there are no changes to be made. All right, let's talk about the inventory slot real quick. So the inventory slot is just a visual representation of the structure that we've created. It will store or display what we're storing in that structure, our inventory slot structure, in a visual manner. We'll see the icon of our item. If it's stackable, we'll see how many we have in our stack. If it's not stackable, then we won't have text for that showing up. This widget will have functionality. We'll start working on that in this video, but we'll only be able to implement uh, the functionality when we put this in the parent widget. So while we'll have some of the functionality set up now, that what we set up now won't be fully implementable until the next video. And then two videos after that, when we get back into working on our menus, we'll implement more functionality into our inventory slot. So the concept that we're, we really need to think about here is sort of children widgets. And they're not children in the sense of inheritance, which we'll talk about in the next prep video for uh, video 17 in the series. They're children in the sense that we're actually adding these widgets into other widgets. And this is a concept we talked about briefly in section one during one of the prep videos before we set up our font. I believe that was either prep video eight or nine. So basically, as I said, we're adding one UMG widget into another UMG widget. This means that that other widget that we're, so the inventory slots being added to our in main inventory UI. Our main inventory UI will be able to see the functions and variables of our inventory slot. So we'll use this concept throughout the section in creating our menus. Again, our menus will be seen by our inventory UI. So our children, or our, sorry, our inventory UI made in the next video will have multiple child widgets. Some of these children widgets will have their own children widgets. We'll talk about that down the road as well. Our pickup prompt also will be a child widget, but not of our main inventory UI, but our main UI overall. So we will reuse this concept a fair amount. Just like adding in a, um, a custom primitive component doing this is aimed at reducing the amount of work that we have to do. So we're trying to avoid replication of efforts. So this means that we're creating hard references. Our main inventory UI will have hard references to the various menus we have and other pop-ups related to those menus. Information for display of the item. So we'll have um, our inventory slot itself as a display of the item. But what I mean here is when we hover over our inventory slot, there'll be a pop-up that reads the item description. We'll have hard references to the equipment uh, variables and UIs that we'll make in section three. And we'll be going, okay, why is it fine to have hard references here, but we try to avoid them elsewhere? Well, this is sort of similar to the friends of class that you find in C++ or even on some level inheritance. As I said, it's a little bit different. When I say child in the last slide, it isn't in the sense of inheritance. The main UI will need to know what exists within it to be able to access it. The menus will not know about each other though. They will not be able to communicate with each other. They will not have hard references to each other. And if they do need another menu to do something, they'll communicate it through the main inventory UI and set it to each other directly. So we're avoiding some dependencies there. We have a one-way system. I'm gonna come back to that concept in just a moment. Okay, so then why is it fine to violate encapsulation like this? Well, we're not really violating encapsulation. 
and this is kind of why it's more of that friends of class thing, is that these classes need to be aware of each other and they are still like with like. We are creating UIs that relate to the inventory that are separate UIs. We could do this all in one widget. You could do everything we're gonna do from video in this video, the next video, and 18 to the end of this section. So notice I skipped 16, 17. We could do everything in those videos in one widget. It just becomes very messy. It becomes much harder to debug. It becomes much harder to work with in general. So we're creating sub widgets instead. And this is still like with like. So in theory, the violation of encapsulation is splitting like with like up. But again, with widgets, it's acceptable to do this. It makes it easier to work with. We are keeping that knowledge of those variables and those functions and methods within something that is similar, that should have access to them. So we're still actually keeping with encapsulation. And in addition, as I've already mentioned, we're controlling the direction of that communication. The menus talk to the main inventory UI. The main inventory UI can talk to the menus, but the menus will only have a limited sort of access to the main uh, inventory UI, whereas the main inventory UI will have full access to it and the menus can't communicate directly with each other. So there'll be again, no interdependencies. So hopefully this all makes sense and this will be a topic that you're gonna to wanna to come back to when we get into video, the next video, and into videos 18 to the end of the section. That said, this video has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Rian, Haynes, and Quad Menson. If you've enjoyed this video or this series, please hit that like button down below. In addition, make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is out. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, or in this case, the tutorial proper, and hope that you have a wonderful day.